Yo, what's up? This is Copycat, and you're listening to Podjusa. Did I say that? I say that like an Australian Podjusa. So, Copycat, I always open my podcast, my normal show, with uh, one question, and that is, what was your first concert? Oh, um, that's an interesting one. So I, both my parents are kind of musical. My dad, I grew up like uh, watching him, like he plays like blues guitar and sings and stuff. So, uh, I mean, if I, if, if I cut those ones out, actually, no, I, I think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the first concert that I willingly chose to go to. Uh, and that was uh, Beach Life 2013. I saw Skrillex, I was 17 years old and I saw Skrillex uh, on the beach on the Gold Coast. I was like, I was a huge bro step kid back in the day, so yeah, Skrillex was, uh, was pretty euphoric. <laughs> that's great, and that's in Australia. Yeah, yeah. That was You're like from Australia, for people who don't know. Yes, yeah, I'm not British. <laughs> just, to, just to clear that up. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Have you been? I, whenever I think of Australia, I just think of Sydney, and it's that music hall with like the swoops. Have yeah, you the been there? House. Yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't been inside it, but yeah, I've seen the Opera House and like walked around it. Just, it's pretty, it just looks cool. Yeah, you know? I feel yeah. like that's why they do it. It's no utility to it. It's just cool looking. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's, it's, it's got like some sound goodizing effects yeah, yeah. or something. <laughs> it's like, got a sound goodizer hall. It's got a sound goodizer built into it. Yeah, you know. Damn, that's so hot. <laughs> Dude, I've actually been following you for a while, and I remember you released something on like Surreal Records. I'm pretty sure it was Surreal. I, I swear, man, it's just it's been a while since I've seen your name. And I also just kind of wanted to clarify: Did you take a little hiatus, or mm. what? What do we call it? Yeah, hi a hiatus is like a good word for it, I guess. Uh, yeah, like around 2019, I uh, I don't know. Yeah, I just kind of hit a wall and uh, I deleted my SoundCloud and. Uh, my like personal Facebook and stuff. I got like a little uh, Nokia brick phone, oh, like uh, with a little yeah. with the keypad, like for about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, it was like so. It wasn't. It wasn't even like a proper Nokia. It was like it was like a Telstra, uh, like Telstra knockoff. So it didn't have the durability of a Nokia, but it had the functionality of a Nokia in terms of it was that primitive. But so it was like a brick. It was a brick. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Just a more yeah. destructible brick. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so that happened. That was uh, probably till uh, I'd say like through COVID, I was like still writing and that sort of thing, but just like not putting out a lot of stuff. And then, yeah, gradually sort of came back into it. But yeah, yeah. just curious why, because I, I actually during this a similar period like just got off social media and was just like I don't want to do this for right now. And now I'm back full force. So I don't know. I'm just curious. Like, what did you learn from that period? And maybe what were the intentions of doing that? I mean, it was a pretty organic thing. I feel like I, uh, I had like t tentatively like tried to to find ways to sort of distance myself from social media and music prior, like just impulsively. Like I, I was like, I don't know. I'm a pretty impulsive person in general, but back then I was very much like just like gradually trying to peel away from it. And I, I would say the main reason. Uh, I think it was like a, it was just like a personal development thing, like just me as a person where I was at, I was growing into something, but it was mainly to do with, I think, uh, kind of being dependent on uh, the affirmation that I got from social media and music and that sort of thing. And I just kind of really fed on that to the point where I didn't really have a life outside of music. So if I wasn't getting like validated by the stuff that I was doing, um, I would just get like anxious and restless and I just be you know, like, like glued. You're not growing or something. Yeah. 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 It just like didn't. Yeah. It's just like this like uh, kind of dopamine addiction almost. So I guess um, I saw that I was just like in general kind of unhappy because of that. And um, I, I don't know. I remember I remember one day I was just like, man, I just want to fucking like play video games. Like I don't play video games anymore because I'm always just like trying to write the best beat ever. Yeah, um, yeah. So I uh, that is the video game. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's it. Yeah. You substitute. Yeah. You substitute the fun stuff for like hustling. I don't know. And like, you know, nowadays I'm still writing a lot of music, but I think that process really gave me freedom. I think that's what happened is I, I realized like I mean, actually, the day I deleted my SoundCloud, I distinctly remember just like deleting it. I went for a 30 minute walk and I came back and I downloaded Portal and played the game all the way through. And then I was just like, yeah, I feel like I did that. Portal 1, the first one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Portal 2 is also a banger. I'm, I'm waiting for yeah. Portal 3. I don't know if it's going to happen, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> cool. Yeah, I feel like that's a, that's, a, that's a game title that's been thrown around a lot, but uh, who knows? We'll see, what would they even do? Like for people who have played Portal 2, it's like... From the first one, there were two portals, and then there were four portals, possibly. It's yeah, like we got yeah, eight yeah. portals. Like, that yeah. would be, dude, the amount of puzzles. <laughs> oh, my God. It would be yeah. kind of mind 
melting. It'd be bad. <laughs> but yeah, I love video games too, so that's why. Um, so I also just wanted to say burnout is real and like I totally get that. So I think a lot of people understand that. Um, I, you know, when you, when I was following you back then, the big thing was neuro. Yeah. And it's still around. Like, I wanted to ask you, you know, kind of what your thoughts are on the genre. And would you consider what you're making now still neuro or I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I feel like no one says that word anymore. It's like kind of uh, it's yeah. like an old term. It used to be like uh, neuro hop was the name of the genre, which is like ironic at first. But yeah, I, I would I guess that term kind of like started to fade and like 2017 when half halftime became more of a thing yeah. which sonically is a different thing like when i think of halftime obviously it's like halftime drum and bass derivative which uh, uh and then like i feel like ivy lab when they started doing like i don't know when they had their like kind of big halftime explosion they really kind of like redefined the genre for a lot of people including me um and i think because of that wave uh the term neuro like halftime kind of became more about the rhythm and the kind of the swing and kind of like like 80, 80 to 95 BPM type thing and less about the like janky basses and like neuro sounds. And so I guess that's like the new term for what I do. But yeah, I guess like sound wise, neuro is kind of defined by the like really sort of crunchy, phasey basses. So, and there's definitely a lot of that in my music. So yeah. um, I don't use the term neuro a whole lot, yeah. particularly like there's like people I meet, they're like people who don't know electronic music. They're like, oh, so how do you like, like what kind of music do you make? And I'm like trying to find the like most palatable word for it. I'm like yeah. never going to say the word neuro. Bass music. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. Yeah, bass music. Yeah. yeah, that's the that's the safe bet. But yeah, no, I guess it's like still neuro kind of. Um, I remember, I think it was Frequent who had yeah. this rack. It was like, you know, how, like, you would do like sine compression yep, and yep. that was, you would take like a sine wave and just like send it through like a shitload of multi-bands yeah. and it would just start to squelch and do all these things. And I just remember yeah. downloading his rack and being like, wow, this is powerful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, for a long time, that was the thing. And I just was curious, like, is that still in the vocab or is it yeah. not so much? Yeah, it's not a genre so much. It's like a, a, a piece of a genre now. That's how I feel about it. Like, it's like you, you use neuro basses, but no one's like, there's not many people out there being like, yeah, I make neuro. You know, it's kind of, uh, right. yeah. And it kind of sounds like a, um, what is it, like a respace kind of, but yeah. it's different to, I don't know. Yeah. I guess people are just more familiar with a reese, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say. I think it depends on the artists you uh, you were listening to throughout that era, because I feel like there's like a few like flagship artists I think of when I think of neuro, like like Koan San would be be one of the big ones to me, like in terms of like yeah. their their style of basses with like the crazy amounts of filtering and like a bit of like like everything, yeah, or like culprit, <laughs> yeah, yeah, culprit as well. I feel like yeah, he's like got the more like big brick kind of like blasty basses, yeah. they're kind of more like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, all like flagship kind of artists. So I, I, I don't know, I guess it depends on like what artists you uh, you encountered during the neuro era. <laughs> it's kind of just a blast from the past. That's why I wanted to mention it. Yeah. Um, cool, man. Well, I have this quote that I wanted to read. You said, uh, my favorite thing about the United States is that I can buy bacon that comes in a resealable packet. <laughs> and I was wondering, is there any other things from the US, like uh, us being a nation of convenience, are there any other things that are really convenient that you enjoy uh, w when you're here? Uh, I'm trying to think, there's definitely been a couple of really noteworthy things. Um, gosh, nothing's coming to mind immediately right now. I'm just thinking about the resealable packet actually. <laughs> yeah. That's like profound, honestly. I don't know why that's not a normal thing. Cause yeah, in Australia, like you, it's like the same looking packet, but you just cut it with a pair of scissors and then you gotta like plastic wrap it after you're done yeah. with it or go like put I it in a container. all the bacon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's it. Like, you shouldn't be forced to do that. Like, it's 2023. You can put a little strip of like, you know, Ziploc plastic on there. Job done. Like, yeah. I just thought that was big brain. I got to Target and I was like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Are there any things in Australia, maybe convenience-wise, that the U.S. is like not doing, not doing that they could be doing? I'm going to say uh, public toilets are a lot more scarce out here. I thought you were going to say that. Yeah, okay, really? I wow. Premonition. Yeah, That's okay. Yeah. Like in Europe, I know like in some places they'll like come out of the ground or like a oh, urinal. Like a, yeah. when I was in Amsterdam, 
Or in the Netherlands, they had like a urinal that came out of the ground. Like it, like mechanically. It yeah. Was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it is it in a booth or is it just like the urinal by itself? And no, you, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was just like a wall, and you like yeah. pee on it. In pot, like, is it enclosed or you're just like? I feel like that would it be com out, It comes out at night. Imagine standing there, like imagine having to push the button and like just like everyone knows you're about to pee because the wall is like coming out. Of the <laughs> yeah, no, I think it comes out like all right, it's like twelve, <laughs> it's like midnight. All right, it raises up until like four in the morning or yeah. something. Oh, okay, so it's yeah, like yeah. you don't like tell it when to come up. It's kind of no, like, yeah. You disappear at the right time. That's but, but so you were saying public urinals? Just yeah, general. yeah, just public bathrooms. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, like, public bathrooms are pretty gross, oh. but just in general, I feel like I've been in so many places, like, so many cities out here where I've just, like, landed and, like, had to go to a Starbucks to chill for a bit, and then I've been like, damn, I can't, like, find a bathroom, or it's, like, uh, key coded or something like that. Like, you really got to, like, I don't know, you got to buy something to use a bathroom, whereas, like, I feel like uh, Melbourne or, like, uh, Brisbane, there's at least a public, like, if you're in the city, there's at least a public toilet within, like, a kilometer of where you are uh, but there's I'm a, I'm a little bit more like uh, a little bit more like survival instinct when i gotta go to the bathroom in cities now i'm like yeah yeah we're gonna figure this out <laughs> no. yeah no i get it i mean it's like i also feel for those starbucks employees where they got a guy that comes in he's a little off his rocker and then he, he's just in the yeah. bathroom for like two hours and you're like what's that guy doing i don't want to go in there but like <laughs> so maybe it's that yeah no, that makes perfect sense i would say that. and i hope that that's not just like a u.s like mental health issue thing that that's just not a thing <laughs> is it maybe that is i don't know well, Melbourne's got its fair share of tweakers as well and okay. yeah yeah. So it's, uh, yeah tweakers are universal okay that's yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like going back to the hiatus thing, I saw you posted about your first show back was Infrasound. Yeah. And I just wanted to like reminisce that and just how did that go? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Infrasound was unreal. That was so cool. And just like, I mean, I mean, obviously like the lineup was unreal, but also just like the production and the, um, I don't know, just the whole festival was so seamless, like the transport and getting up on stage, everything was just like super functional. The sound system was amazing. Crowd vibe was amazing. That was just like, yeah, A plus across the board. That was so magical. And yeah, the fact that, that was my first US show was just like, holy shit, like this is- Oh, so that was the first here. US show, okay. Yeah, cool. well, I mean, you know, in terms of uh, for this tour, legally, <laughs> let's put it that way. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I've heard yeah. that visas are tricky from what I've, <laughs> you've had some weird experiences with the visas, right? Yeah, I mean, I think I got I got pretty uh, I was pretty fortunate with this process. It was pretty like um, it was pretty straightforward. Like we had like a good turnaround and stuff. But yeah, they definitely don't make it easy to get the visa. I uh, I know a few homies that um, yeah, I've just had like bad experiences. It's it's a real thing. Like I didn't really know too much about it until I was talking to someone who was telling me about it. And it's like it's not easy. And there is a lot of like pitfalls. And I just don't think everyone realizes that. And that's part of the reason why people can't just travel to the states or you know go back and forth super easily and so yeah, 100%. yeah um i also wanted to just ask generally like who right now are you really enjoying listening to like who are you some of your inspirations coming back this is an interesting one so my taste i mean like i will always love electronic music my taste in the last like four or five years has shifted a lot to bands. Okay, actually, before I do that though, electronically, there's definitely a few artists that still like really blow me away. Um, Chi is like, for, for a little while, has been like one of my like, I don't know, most like enamored artists. I think he's just like always doing innovative shit. His like sound design is incredible. His like, you know, songwriting ideas are always just like a little bit ahead of the pack. Um, so love Chi, um, but yeah. Did you release Unsaturate? at one point no no, no. I, I, i'm like getting all the facts wrong now this is, you know i did do a remix for him that was on saturate oh okay okay because uh, i'm like it's like that same era like when we were talking about before during the, yeah. the neuro stuff or yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. totally yeah I'm not just imagining <laughs> no no yeah yeah saturate yeah i did that i did a remix of one of his tracks for saturate so that might have been it mm -hmm. uh yeah so in terms of bands bands um okay uh lately I've been split between two different, a few different vibes, but like uh, I would say like King Cruel, I mean, he's not a band, he's like a solo artist, but uh, yeah. King Cruel has been like probably my biggest influence for the last like five or so years. Like pretty much every, every album he's put out has just been like massively, I don't know, like uh, influential for me. Um, also, there's like a handful of like kind of 
uh, niche like hardcore bands that I really get into. Hardcore is like really broad, so there's a bunch of stuff that I don't like. But yeah, there's a couple of like weird bands. Like it's kind of like saying bass music. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah you can show people your favorite hardcore band and they and they'll be like, I'm into hardcore, but I hate that. That sucks. <laughs> like, could you put metal in hardcore? Like, is that? I mean, it, like, I wouldn't say it is, but I feel like if I say hardcore music, it's like. Who knows what that is, you know? Yeah, I'm sure someone would be offended by you doing that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Because metal's like, it has so many, it has a huge tree of different genres <laughs> within it. I feel like maybe hardcore is within metal. I don't know. Oh, okay, now we're splitting hairs. Right now. You guys are wrong. Well, I don't know, we've... <laughs> something that comes up on this show a ton is just like, genres are kind of stupid. Yeah. But uh, they're they're useful sometimes. Yeah, it's all just for the sake of communicating it, right? Like, I, f I feel like artists are easier for me than genres sometimes. Like, I just, like, I'll be like, oh, it sounds like this. It sounds like this guy. It sounds like this guy. And then, you know, yeah. And then this guy, this era, too, because yeah, yeah. artists change. Totally. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. You're like, I'll, I'll pick, like, an album or, like, a, yeah, be like, King Cruel in 2016, King Cruel in 2018. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to wrap up with uh, just kind of what's next for Copycat and like what's what's kind of like your tour schedule look like. I saw that you have a lot of dates, um, so yeah, let's let's run through that. Yeah, um, so tour wise, I'm I mean, I'm just finishing up the, the tour for this year, um, so I've got f uh, five more shows I think, including tonight, uh, and then um, putting some stuff on for next year. So that's what we're organizing right now, and just uh, man, yeah, I think uh, I, I think. Uh, touring this is definitely the most shows i've done in such a like small period of time so i've learned a lot and that's and that's sort of like at the moment uh logistically just getting everything together for next year so it'll be shows uh definitely releasing a lot of music i've been making a lot of beats just on the road and then a backlog of stuff that i wrote basically during hiatus um tentatively uh trying to put together an album i've got like the whole thing sketched out but uh it's a very like, uh, I'm like really precious about it. So we'll, yeah. we'll see how that one goes. But yeah, so definitely a bunch of singles, a few remixes coming out, um, the the normal shit, Show, shows and music. <laughs> For sure. And then I also just wanted to ask you, is there anything specifically you wanted to just talk about that we didn't cover? Like, I don't know. I, I don't normally ask that question, but I just wanted to give you the opportunity to, Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. If there was anything, you know. Uh -oh. Actually, who's the most intimidating artist that you've interviewed? Someone that you like asked a question and it's just like... And it was just, they were being like KG or something? Yeah, or just like maybe someone that you admired a lot or whatever. And it was just like, I don't know, tricky interview. Actually, KG is a funny question. It's dicey, get yourself in trouble. Yeah, I don't, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> KG is like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't feel like we've, everyone who's come on the show has been really gracious and like just cool about answering questions and sitting down with us, taking a second to do it. Um, so it's like, I don't know, we haven't really had any bad artists, and that sounds like such a cop-out, but I swear, like, yeah. no one's been really like, well, why, like, no one's been like, dude, that's a dumb question, or something, like, if I got that, I'd be like, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm failing at my job. Yeah, that's, I feel like if somebody's like that, that's, like, hardly your fault, unless you were really digging at, like, sensitive shit or whatever, like, if an artist is, like, signed up for, you know, to come out to do an interview, and just be like, I hate that question, like, that's, <laughs> I mean, I, anti the interview vibe, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, and I feel like I get it, if you do a lot of interviews too and you get asked the same question a lot it's like oh dude you didn't do your research like you didn't know that that but yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> i don't know also at the same time it's not like everyone saw that one interview that you did so yeah, it's like yeah I, I don't know yeah. yeah bass music's i think a little bit more chill like in terms of like your average like bass music producer there are definitely divas but i feel like by and large like uh, at least comparing my experience to like homies who are into like pop or like R&B or rap, there's just like more of just like, uh, we just like make music and have fun kind of culture. Whereas I feel yeah. like, yeah, maybe if you're interviewing like a uh, rap artist or like pop, you know, might be, yeah. might get a bit, a bit more of a mixed bag. <laughs> that, that is definitely true. And we haven't interviewed that many like rappers, but some, yeah, some, yes. <laughs> some, yeah. Where can people find you? uh instagram is probably the best in terms of uh just like keeping tabs on stuff uh so my instagram handle is uh it's copycat so i-t-s-c-o-p-y two t's two t's yeah yep two t's in the end why two t's um oh damn yeah i just uh i just like added a t and then like i i thought of copycat ages ago and i was like i just like searched it to see if it would come up and there was like a movie and all this stuff so i just added an extra t to see if it would like improve you know 
search value and it did yeah it was like it's like a random keyboard app it's like a co like a copy paste keyboard app i downloaded it. it's actually pretty good yeah Wait, so what is it keyboard the, oh oh so there's an app yeah that, it's oh. like for your phone so it's kind of like you know you can get those like deluxe uh, clipboards you know where it's like you basically like copy something and rather than just having like one clipboard slot it'll just like add it to this little archive of stuff you put on the clipboard it's kind of oh, like that right? Yeah, yeah, I didn't even know about that. That's like some uh, some efficiency. That's like some AI like efficiency stuff. If you're not using AI, you're falling behind. Yeah, yeah, but if you're not using this clipboard, you're falling behind. <laughs> Damn, I gotta check that out. I'm out here plugging the competition. I'm like I'm like knocking down my SEO by plugging these guys. But they did a good job. So you know, yeah. gotta 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 keep them keep them going. <laughs> That's okay. It's it's fine. Friendly <laughs> friendly competition's okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, it's keeping me motivated. <laughs> I got a yeah. keyboard app. <laughs> gotta get that SEO going. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming out. We really appreciate it.